<sighs> Fine, I'll take it off. How's it going, guys? It's Nordic here. So as you could probably tell yesterday, the NHL season officially started. We saw Yunus Corposalo play like Swiss cheese. We saw Utah play their first ever game. It's a great time. Hockey's back. Am I right? I was thinking to myself, I'm like, hmm, what can I do to celebrate the start of the season since I was so far behind on my season previews and barely got them done and didn't have time to do anything? So I thought to myself, let's do a tier list. So this is my official 2024-25 start of the season tier list. We're going to go through all 32 teams here today and talk about six possible categories that each of them could be in. As you can tell, we have cup contenders, playoff locks, playoffs likely, in the hunt, Playoffs unlikely and 2025 draft. Just want to apologize. You might not be able to see the tiers that well. I, I apologize. The The platform that I use is the usual platform that I use for my podcast. And I thought, oh, you know, maybe I could use this for this. Yeah, no, I'm not using this again. But back to the video. So should be very self-explanatory. The teams are in a different order than usual. So let's just get straight into it. We'll start off with the Colorado Avalanche. Last year, they obviously made the playoff. They lost in the second round to the Dallas Stars. Close, well-fought series, but there were lacks of goaltending. You had guys like Nachushkin go out midway through. And this team in the offseason made a couple of solid moves, I would say. They brought in a few solid, you know, deaf pieces and some young players. I got to say... Without Landis Kog and Nachushkin, I unfortunately don't think that they are cup contenders right now. I would put them in playoff locks, and I'll explain why. Cup contenders are teams that obviously are contending for the Stanley Cup. I think Colorado will be in there. They will probably be the highest team that's in playoff lock in this category. But I got to be honest with you, without Landis Kog and without Nachushkin, that offense outside of McKinnon and Rontanen might struggle a little bit. I'm just being plain honest. Now, I do like a lot of the things that this team is building. And I think that in the future, if Landis Cog and Nachushkin do come back midway through, I like them more then. But as of right now, I'm not terribly keen on them being a cup contender, at least as of right now. Next up, the Chicago Blackhawks. That's Connor Bedard's team. I think they're locked on 2025, even though they got a few pieces this past year that make them look better. I still don't think that they are necessarily like a playoff team just yet. Just to be brutally honest with you guys, I don't see them as a playoff team yet. Definitely not. So they're still going to be locked on the 2025 draft and building up their future overall. Next up, then you got Columbus. And Columbus, I'm going to put in the same column, but I'm going to put them below Chicago. Now, Columbus, you got to you gotta show some... Um, sympathy to them because honestly they've been through a lot they have with what happened to Johnny Gaudreau with what has happened previously since then just them not struggle just them struggling and them not being able to get the right pieces to succeed in the short term um they've been in a really rough spot the last couple of years and hopefully this will be the last year of them not being so good and then maybe some of those young pieces and that bright future can help turn this team around a little bit but yeah, they're in a rough spot right now overall. I just got to be honest with you guys. That's kind of where I see the Chicago, or the Columbus Blue Jackets right now. Next up, the St. Louis Blues. The Blues brought in a few good pieces. Obviously, yesterday they beat the Kraken. When you guys see this, it might be a couple days later. But they look like they're playing well. I like the ads of Broberg and Holloway. However, I'm going to put them in playoffs unlikely. I just can't see them getting in. I can't. I don't think that they will be a playoff team this year, mainly because I don't have a lot of faith on that bottom six depth. You have a lot of new players in that bottom six. Can those guys really mesh together very well? I'm also not a fan of the blue line, especially with the Tory Krug injury. I like the out of Broberg, yes, but I'm not a huge fan of it outside of that, to be honest with you. And I like the goaltending. I like Bennington. I like Hofer. It's just a matter of can those guys, you know, hold up the back line, but I don't really know. That's a competitive central division. They did come close last year. 
I would say if they have a good start, I think there's a really good chance they break in. But as of right now, I'm putting them in playoffs unlikely, unfortunately. All right, Boston. The Boston Bruins, obviously, they lost in the second round to Florida. Uh, they ended up getting blown out. Well, not really blown out at that point. They ended up losing to Florida last night in a pretty brutal game. And it doesn't look too good. Now, on the bright side, they did sign Jeremy Swayman, which if I was making this video, then I would have a different opinion than I do right now. I'm putting them in playoff lock. And, and, and I have no shame in doing that, to be honest with you. I think that Boston is going to make the playoffs especially if Swayman is playing. I understand there's some doubt with Corpusalo, but it's the first game. You can't really put a ton of fault on him just yet. I'm not going to weigh one game on the Boston Bruins season, and more specifically, Unas Corpusalo season. That's not fair to him. I honestly believe that this team can be definitely a playoff lock for sure and break in there. They have a good enough offense. Their blue line's great. So hopefully I'm right. Next up, the Montreal Canadiens. Last year, they were bottom five in the league. They ended up getting Ivan Demidoff. There's a chance that he might come over at the beginning of not this season, but next season. But as of right now, because of the injuries, I'm going to put them in playoffs unlikely. You could make an argument in here. I guess you could. If you're not terribly high on Ottawa or Detroit or Buffalo, there's a legitimate argument to make for putting the Canadiens in the hunt. But I'm going to put them in playoffs unlikely because they're going to miss line A for the next two to three months. And then David Reinbacker as well, they're going to miss too. And also just because they just can't seem to stay healthy. Like, and I mean, the line A and Reinbacker injuries already kind of show that this could be a rough year for them yet again. So they really lack like the, the, the ability to stay healthy. They have a lot of injury bug guys on their team, which is unfortunate, but it is unfortunately true. But Hopefully that will change and maybe they do break in, but I think there's no pressure. I don't think there's any pressure whatsoever on Montreal to really get into the playoffs. There might be some fans who are getting a little bit restless without this much time, not in the playoffs, but still, I don't think there's any pressure whatsoever for them to get in. If they finish at a lower record this year, then it's not a big deal at all, but I think they will absolutely be competitive for sure. Uh, Vancouver, I don't like Vancouver's goalie situation, especially with Demko being out for what seems like a longer period of time. They're gonna, he's gonna miss at least the first month of the season. Maybe that changes, but as of right now, I'm not a huge fan. I'm still putting them in playoff lock, though. I'm, you guys probably thought I was gonna put them in like in the hunt or something. No, they're still a playoff lock, in my opinion. I think that they still have a really good team. They did lose some depth, but I like some of the ads they brought in in replacement. I like Sprung. I like DeHarnay. I think they had some good ads in their bottom six and in their defensive core. So hopefully that will work out. And if Demko is out for a longer period of time and this team does end up struggling, you could see me and my later tier list throughout the season put them lower on this list. But I think at least as of right now, they have to be a playoff lock. Next up, the Washington Capitals. The Capitals brought in a lot of new ads this past offseason. I like a lot of the things that they did. Um, they brought in Mangiapane. Dubois was a little bit of a question. I'll get into that in a second. I like Brandon Duhame. I like Jacob Chickren. I like Matt Roy. I like a lot of the ads they made. Dubois is a little bit of an interesting one because, honestly, you look in terms of what he did with L.A. in that one season he was there, and he gets locked up to that. I think it was an eight-year contract. Yeah. It's brutal, and I think if Spencer Carberry can't get to him, this will be looked at as a really bad deal for Washington, and it could put them in a really bad spot. Just got to be brutally honest with you guys. I'm going to put Washington in the hunt. I like a lot of the moves that they made. I just don't know if all of them are going to mesh well together, and I think some of them, too, were honestly kind of ads to help out Ovechkin to break that goal record. Got to be honest with you guys. That's kind of how I see a lot of these ads happening, but... You know, maybe they're able to push in. Again, last year, the Eastern Conference was like such a bloodbath, and Washington came in and snagged the last spot in like the second to last day of the season. So it's a matter of getting hot at the right time and definitely being in the hunt for sure, but I think they will be. I wouldn't say they're likely to make the playoffs. There's some people who may believe that with the new guys they brought in, but I think that with how competitive that Metro is 
and overall that Eastern Conference, I think in the hunt is very fair. Next up, the New Jersey Devils. The Devils last year had one of the most disappointing seasons of, honestly, any team in the NHL. I got to be honest. Um, they were looked at to make the playoffs, honestly win the division, and they ended up not doing any of those things at all. They finished seventh last year. But I like the guys they brought in. I like Brett Pesci. I like Jacob Markstrom. I think those are perfect guys to bring in. Even guys like Jonathan Kovacevic, who was like signed as a third-pairing deaf defenseman, has become very effective for the Devils in the first two games. Again, it's only two games. Again, I want to say that it's only two games played, but they look pretty damn good. So I'm going to put them in playoffs likely. Some people may not like that because they were out of it last year, and it's a pretty basic pick. Like, you're not going to see a lot of hot takes here from me, to be honest. You might see a few, but not a ton. Again, I think with what the Devils brought in, they bring in Sheldon Keith. He already looks really good. And I think, honestly, with the ad of Markstrom, who looks incredible through the first two games, guys like Seamus Casey and Kovacevic playing pretty well for the Devils' injured players. I wouldn't say it's impossible for them to miss because I have them in playoffs likely, but like if they did miss, man, there would be a lot of things that would get ugly there in Jersey. But I think they're playoffs likely, at least as of right now. That's where I personally see them. Uh, some people may think differently. Some people might put them in playoff lock. But I think for a team that didn't make it last year, I think I think he should be in likely. All right, next up, the Anaheim Ducks. The Ducks last year were obviously, again, had a brutal season. I think they were bottom three in the NHL. So it was not a fun year for them. I'm going to put them, and hear me out, I'm not going to put them in lockdown 2025. I'm going to put them in playoffs unlikely. Because I think that even though, like, they do have a, they are probably going to be in the 2025 draft lottery again and probably going to get a decently high pick. I think they're going to contend. I think they're going to be legitimate. I think they're going to have a lot of young players who are going to be able to score. They're going to be entertaining. They're going to be a lot of fun. And I think that people are going to realize out of the start, like if Anaheim goes off to like a 10 and seven or six record, they're going to be like, oh man, this team's, this team's going pretty good right now. So don't be surprised if that happens. And I like the young guys they brought in, um, the good blue line as well. I like having Mintukov and Zellweger maybe getting some time in there. And Dostal is your starter right now with Gibson being hurt. So I would say that Anaheim's in a good spot right now. Again, there's not a lot of pressure for them to make the playoffs this year. If they do, that would be a massive surprise and it would be terrific. But I think there's some people who are really kind of high on this team and think that they really could contend for a playoff spot but I'm not going that far yet a team this young kind of like Montreal like you really don't want to jump the gun that early especially coming out of the rebuild is one of the most difficult things to do exhibit a Ottawa exhibit B Buffalo exhibit C Detroit so like honestly those are different examples because of the division but Anaheim if they do get off to a start I could see them maybe breaking in but I'm going to put them in playoffs unlikely for now Next up, then the Calgary Flames. The Flames, I got to put them in uh, locked on 2025 draft. I think this team lost a lot last season, this past off season, and I think all of their veterans, all of the guys who are on expiring contracts are on the chopping block. I think that you have to consider trading even more guys to get future assets. Now, there's some people in the media who have said to me on my picks saying, Calgary's going to surprise you, just watch. And I, and I understand that because they have a lot of young players they have a lot of young guys with their roster, with a few veterans mixed in. They're kind of like a Western Conference Philadelphia Flyers. Not going to lie to you. But honestly, I think they're still going to be pretty bad. I think they're going to finish seventh, likely, in that division. Maybe even eighth. I think you're relying on a lot of young players to really carry this team. And I know I'm kind of contradicting myself saying that with Anaheim. But with Calgary, they just traded away so many of their assets and I think that they got to have one year of tanking and not being so good before they get back into the race again. But again, those young players, you can't help but be excited. I think you got to be excited for guys like Coronado and Zary and Hanzik as well, who might have just made the team. So you can't help but be excited. But again, you got to be a little bit conservative with your opinion. So I, I'm putting them in 2025 draft. I see some of the hype, but I don't see all of it. I also like Dustin Wolf and Net too. So. Hopefully, that will do well for them. Next up then, the Philadelphia Flyers. 
Um, so Philadelphia is my favorite team for those who do not know. Um, I also like Utah too, which we'll get into in a little bit. Cause I know you guys are like Nordic. Why do you like Utah? Um, yeah. So Philadelphia for me, they bring in Mave Mitchkoff. They don't do a ton else. And I, and I think they didn't need to do a lot else to be honest with you. I think when you look in terms of what this team needed to do, they did. I, I would have liked to see some, maybe some acquisitions on the forward core, maybe make the forward core a little bit better, but Apart from Mitchkoff, they didn't really do that. But overall, I think that Mitchkoff is a great add. I think that really helps out this roster. Resigning Eric Johnson as well and Garnet Hathaway are good adds. However, no, guys. I'm not putting them in playoffs. I'm putting them in playoffs unlikely. I think that, to be honest with you, they're really... They are the same roster, but I think there's there there's a chance that they do make it. Like, there's some people who underrate them. I think they could be, like, a sneaky playoff team, but... As of right now, I'm putting them in playoffs unlikely. I think that, I think honestly, being bad would be kind of the best thing that could happen to us. Because if we get a top five pick, or not even like a top five pick, another top 10 draft pick alongside Matvey Mechkov, I think that that's incredible. I think it really is incredible. And you see how Jet Luchanko has performed already? That's that you can't help but be excited. Come on. You can't help but be excited for some of the guys on this team. I'm not saying they won't be fun. Mitchkoff will be fun. They'll work hard. They'll be contenders. But I'm going to be a little bit conservative on my prediction and put them in playoffs unlikely. The Vegas Golden Knights then, they made a few moves after winning their Stanley Cup that has really made me question things. So, again, they win the Cup in 2023. They lose in the first round to Dallas. Yada, yada, yada. You know the story. They let go of Marsha Salt. They let go of Stevenson. They let go of guys like Paul Cotter. And honestly, the guys they brought in, a lot of ifs. You brought in Sam Sonoff. You bring in Holtz. You bring in Olafson. There's a lot of ifs on that roster. Now, maybe Olafson pans out with Eichel. And maybe under a new regime, maybe Holtz will be better. But honestly, right now, I'm not terribly high on them. However, I am, for the sake that it's Vegas going to put them in playoffs unlikely or, or playoffs likely not playoffs unlikely some people might be shocked at that some people I know have them down here but I look at that forward core it's good first line solid second line and then after that I do have a couple questions but again if those guys can pan out I think they can make it and it's Vegas it's Vegas the defensive core is really good still the goaltending I like I like Hill I think they probably get in. Probably. Unless there's a team from the West, more specifically in that Pacific, that breaks out and plays unreal, I think they probably make it in. And, and people won't like that, but I really do think they, they're probably going to get in, to be honest. Because that's just how Vegas rolls. They always find a way to get it done. That's what I always say. Uh, next up then, the Carolina Hurricanes. This is a team that lost a lot. They let go of Gensel, they let go of Pesci, they let go of Shea, they let go of Tara Vinan, they let go of Gensel. I think I already said Gensel. But anyways, um, they bring in a few guys that I like. I like Walker, I like Gossespair, I like Carrier, I like Roslovic, and a few ads they made in the forward depth. But as of right now, I wouldn't call them playoff locks. I'm going to put them in playoffs unlikely, or playoffs likely. I don't know why I want to say playoffs unlikely so bad, but I'm going to put them in playoffs likely because I believe that Carolina, they are still a really good team. They have a great team. They're well coached, good blue line, even after losing all that they lost. Um, I like the goaltending. I like Anderson and Kachekov. Those are two solid tandem goalies who have worked out well in Carolina. So I think I don't, I wouldn't say they're locks because there is a chance that they do miss the playoffs, but I'm going to put them in likely to make the playoffs. I think they still probably do make it just because of how weak that Metropolitan is and because they have experience and because that team can definitely break in. But again, this year might be a year where you kind of see them slow down a little bit and not be as good as they were in previous years, which is not a bad thing whatsoever. Um, you, again, you, you see how they've been performing the last couple of years. You want to make a change, and this might be the process of doing that. They might want to do this so they're better long term. We'll see, though. Next up, then, the New York Islanders. The Islanders last year, they fire Lane Lambert. They brought in Patrick Waugh. They get hot at the right time, and they end up making the playoff. They do lose to Carolina in five games. I'm going to put them in the hunt. There's some people who want to put them in here, and there's some people who want to put them um, in here, actually, because 
every year. And I, and I'm a victim of this too. They love to doubt the Islanders. They love to put them like seventh in the Metro and put them down lower in the standings, which is what I've done in the past before as well. Believe me, I have, but honestly, I look in terms of like this team, like with Patrick Waugh, they really could break in. They really could. And, and, and if Barzal, we saw how Barzal played under Waugh last year. I think that honestly, if like you can get that out of Barzal again and they don't have like kind of like a bad start and they learn how to actually hold a lead for once, I think they can probably get in. Not going to lie to you. I think they could probably get in. And again, with that weak Metro, and I think apart from the Devils, like, you know, being a team that rises up, it's pretty much up for grabs. Like the wild cards are pretty much up for grabs right now for a lot of, for a few teams in that Metro and obviously the Atlantic as well. So we'll see if the Islanders can break in, but they, they seem to be able to do it every single year. So I wouldn't rule it out that they get in. I'm just saying, I wouldn't rule it out. Next up then we got the Winnipeg Jets. The Jets um, are a team that didn't do a lot this past off season. They obviously lost in round one to the Avalanche, which was embarrassing by the way, but obviously I think this team, and this might be a little bit of a hot take. People might not like this over Jersey and Vegas. I think they're a lock. I think they are absolutely a lock. I think when you have players like Shifley and Kyle Connor and Gabriel Velarde, I know like you guys might be cringing at the fact, but Velarde looked good last year. Shifley's a solid first line center. I think they're really good. Like they have a really good top nine. The blue line has me left it, leaving some questions. But when you have Connor Hellebuck in net, you should be a lock to make it every single season. Hellebuck was lights out last year. Same with Brassois, who was his backup goalie. I think that, honestly, you got to put him in lock. As long as Connor Hellebuck is healthy, as long as Connor Hellebuck is the Hellebuck that we know, you got to put them in playoff lock. Just saying. So, at least as of right now, we have six of the same teams that made it last year in the playoffs. And then only one team from last year that didn't make the playoffs that could make the playoffs. So next up, we got the LA Kings. The Kings are a fun team, um, but they made a lot of moves this past offseason. They let go of um, Dubois. They let go of a few other players. They brought in Fogel, Edmondson, and a few other pieces for their depth. Um, I think it's good bringing in Darcy Kemper as a good, like, solid, maybe starting goaltender. Hopefully he can pan out for LA. I'm going to put them in the hunt for now. I'm going to put them in the hunt because I honestly think that the Kings, I like their roster, but again, there's a few people that are doubting them and I'm kind of one of them too. Like that Pacific division, they kind of barely scraped in last year. But again, I'm not, I'm not like extremely counting them out just yet because honestly, like it's, it's LA. They'll be contenders. They'll be fighting for sure. And I, and I think that, Honestly, like people kind of like overlooked the fact that this team had a really good start to the year last year. If they can do that again, they're probably a lock to get in, to be honest. Seattle Kraken. Um, the Kraken made a few moves. They brought in Stevenson and Montour, which I like. Montour is a uh, probably first pairing defenseman. Stevenson's probably your number one or number two center. I got to say, there's a few questions I have with that forward core. I am personally going to put them in the hunt, though, because I think that when you look in terms of Seattle, I just don't know if they're really going to be a team that can um, break through in that Pacific and get in. There's a lot of people that are high on them, but for me right now, I just don't know. A lot of, a lot of what ifs with Seattle. I really do think that they can push in, but again, it's, it's kind of a competitive Pacific, even though it's kind of weak. So we'll see what happens there, of course. On to another Atlantic Division team. We got the Tampa Bay Lightning now. So Tampa, they lose Stamkos. They lose Sergachev. There's a lot of people who don't like the way that I think about this team. I'm going to put them in playoffs likely. I think they still probably make it in. But I can't lie to you guys. I honestly am not terribly high on them this year. I think they're probably going to make it in on a wild card spot. Unless if they do better than Toronto, which is who I have above them. I don't know. Um, I think that they're very top heavy with Kucherov and Point. And I like the out of Gensel, yes. But apart from that, they don't have a lot of forward depth. The blue line has me asking some questions after the first pairing. And I like Vasilevsky and Ned, of course, because it's Vasilevsky. Come on. But apart from that, I don't know. I think they likely do break in unless if we see a team in that Atlantic division 
pop off. Like if Detroit takes a step from last season, then I think that we could see Tampa out of the playoffs. We really could. Next up, the Toronto Maple Leafs. Toronto, I think, made a lot of good moves. They brought in Tanev. They brought in OEL. They brought in Stolars. They re-signed a few guys in the forward core. I, uh, I, I'm going to put them in playoffs likely. And people, I'm going to put them above New Jersey, though. Some people may not like that. But some people also probably won't like the fact that they're not in playoff locks either. I honestly believe that Toronto, with that forward core, they could very well miss. And again, this is barring an Atlantic team, whether it's Detroit, Buffalo, or Ottawa, or even like Montreal. If they absolutely surprise everyone and have a really good season, I think that there's a incredible chance that Toronto could miss the playoffs. But they have Matthews, they have Marner, they have Nylander. Uh, Joseph Wall did just go on injury reserve today, so now you got some concerns with uh, Stolarz being your starting goaltender. I mean, Stolarz was a good backup goalie, but I don't know if I trust him as a starting goaltender. But hopefully, knock on wood, hopefully the Leafs will be able to break in even despite that. I think they definitely will. Um, they're probably one of the most likely teams to get in for sure. I just wouldn't put them in locks because I think there really is a decent chance they could miss the playoffs, to be honest with you. The next two are Edmonton and Florida, and I'm going to put them in the same column, guys. They're both going to go in cup contenders. I think that that's completely fair. Both were in the finals last year. We saw how Florida played last night. We saw how they can mesh their lines together and not put all their top guys in the front, on the first line and all play very well. They're still a cup contender. And the Oilers, I love almost every single move they made this offseason. They have a really good forward core. The blue line has some questions. I won't deny that. The blue line gives me some questions, and I like the goaltending. So I really do believe that they're both cup contenders, and I think that it's completely fair to put them in the same column. You might not like that, but let me know your thoughts down below because this is a free country, obviously. Um, next up, then, the Pittsburgh Penguins. The Penguins, again, they're a team that was in that Metro. They got hot last year. They almost got in, but they missed by a couple of points. People won't like this, but I'm going to put them in the hunt. And I'm going to put them between um, LA and Seattle. I'm not terribly high on Pittsburgh. I'm not. I don't think that, honestly, with that defensive core of Carlson and Latang, I think they're okay. But I think that they're at one point going to regress, and I think we might see that this season. The forward depth is not good at all. Yes, you have Crosby. I understand that. But Crosby can carry a team, but can he do that at this stage in his career? I just, I just don't really know right now. And I think that in that competitive Eastern Conference, I don't know if I can see, I don't know if I can see them breaking in. I don't. I don't know if I can see Pittsburgh getting into the playoffs. And that's a hard pill to swallow, but I don't know if I can see it, to be honest with you guys. Next up, the Nashville Predators. The Predators made a ton of moves. And I'm going to save you guys from um, raging at me. I'm going to put them in playoffs likely. I'm going to put them between. I'm going to put them right here, though. That might be a little bit controversial. But I really do believe that I think Nashville... They brought in Stamkos, they brought in Marshall, they brought in Shea. They are loaded. Great top six, incredible top six, great top four on the blue line. And I think that you make a few moves at the trade deadline and make some forward death pieces, and you have a first-round pick. You have a lot of cap space. I think Nashville could be dangerous. They're going all in. They are going all in for a Stanley Cup. Are they going to be able to do it? We'll see. Last year, they broke in with that point streak. They did really well. I think with the new ads that they have, I think they really could get in, but we're going to find out. We're going to find out if Nashville is going to be able to do that, but I think that they have a really good chance at breaking into the play. Actually, I would put them up. Hmm, I don't know, because like the order the order really doesn't matter, but some people do like look at the order and be like, eh, you know, why would you do that? But yeah, I think I'm going to keep it the same. I might change my opinion later, though. I'll let you guys know. Next up, the New York Rangers. Rangers are cup contenders. Um, I think that with New York, it is going to be their last dance with that roster. I think that Shostarkin rejecting an $88 million contract last, um, last, uh, yesterday, not last yesterday. Um, well, I guess it, yeah, um, you can tell I'm tired, but anyways, I think that locking in Shostarkin is going to be integral to this team. And I think that when he does sign, which is probably going to be like 11.5 to 12 at this point. I think that you're going to have to make some things to make the money work, and they might not be as good as they've been in previous years. So this really might be the last dance for this Rangers roster to really contend for a Stanley Cup. 
And that might be a hard pill to swallow for some people. All right, next up, we got the three Atlantic Division teams. The next three Atlantic Division teams that are probably causing the most arguments every single season. You got Detroit, you got Buffalo, you got the Senators. We'll start off with the Red Wings. Some people may not like this, but I'm putting them right here. In the hunt between the Capitals and the Kings, people won't like that. But I got to be honest with you guys. I see them cutting Mazer. I see them cutting Casper. I see them cutting Danielson. Maybe that's because they're not ready, but they also make moves too. They trade away Wallman. They don't really take going out and getting an actual goaltender seriously. They just go out and get Cam Talbot. They bring in a few death pieces that I like, but... I hate to break it to you guys. I don't think they're going to make it this year. And there's some people that really won't like that. That really won't like that. But I think that, again, like they they made moves this offseason that screamed to me that they don't want to contend. That they don't want to be in that playoff window. They don't want to uh, make the playoffs just yet. They want to take another year to really evaluate themselves, give their younger guys another year of development. If they make it, that's great. But the way I see it, like if they wanted to make the playoffs, they would have not traded Wallman first off. They would have taken they would have taken getting an actual goaltender seriously instead of getting Cam Talbot. With no disrespect to Cam Talbot, but you need someone better than that to get into the playoffs, especially in that Eastern Conference. I think they will be competitive. I think they will score. I think they will be fun. I like Tarasenko. I like Kane's extension. I like Raymond. I like Larkin. But right now, I think I have to put them in the hunt. And I would put a few teams over them in the hunt. And people won't like that. I'm sorry. Next up, then the Buffalo Sabres. The Sabres, I'm lower on. And I hate to break it to you guys. But I'm going to put them below the Kings next to the Penguins. Um, yeah, Buffalo, like it, it seems really negative right now. And, and even with those two games that they played in the, in the, in the global series, it seems really negative. Like they didn't look that good. They didn't show like they showed a lot of effort with Lindy Ruff. Like I didn't see what I, what I wanted to see out of the gate and it doesn't look great. You face some injuries too, like with losing power, with losing Paterka, they got to hurt. They do. They have to hurt. So it really sucks for the Sabres right now going through this. But unfortunately, sometimes this is how it has to be. Um, I hope that they can eventually break in. And, and again, it's only two games. Like, I'm not terribly low on them as some people might be. Some people have them finishing last in that division. But I believe that they're probably going to be seventh in that Atlantic division again. And it sucks, but they're not ready. They're not ready. They're not ready at all to be honest with you. I like what they're building, but I don't, I just think you need another year or two of just development from this core, to be honest. Next up, the Ottawa Senators, the final team of those three in that Atlantic. And people won't like this at all, but they're going at the top of in the hunt. They are. They're going at the direct top of in the hunt. I think getting Olmark is the topping on the cake or the, the icing on the cake is what they actually call it. Come on, Nordic. But I think Ottawa, they... Actually, like in the second half of the year, they look solid. I think that if they can have a really good start and not crumble by November, this team is a playoff team. This team is absolutely a playoff team. There's a lot of people who think they can break in this year, especially with the ad of Linus Olmark, and they just signed him to a four-year deal today. So hopefully he will pan out for that team. But again, I do have some concerns. Bottom six, a little bit iffy. I like it, but it's still a little bit iffy. Can the blue line with the ad of Jensen and a few subtractions pan out? Can it stay healthy? That's the other question. We'll see. But I think right now the Ottawa Senators have a really good chance at breaking into the playoffs. And people won't like that, but that's kind of where I have them right now. Next up, the San Jose Sharks. The Sharks, I think, should not surprise anyone. They are a bottom-feeding team. They are going to be bad. I'm putting them at the bottom of the tier list, the bottom of every team. They're locked on the 2025 draft. Now, they will be fun. They'll be fun to watch. They got young guys like Celebrini and Smith and Borderlow and Eklund and Toffoli. The list goes on and on. They have a lot of exciting guys. But I think that it's going to take a few more years for them to develop and get there. And I think that if you get another like top five pick in San Jose, 
this team is going to be lethal in the next couple of seasons. So I think that that's the best thing that could happen to them. They'll be more entertaining this year, but as of in terms of like, you know, being better in the standings, I don't think I can really see that. On paper, they might be a little bit better. The on-ice product will be good as well, but apart from that, I think they're about the same. Dallas Stars, uh, they are a cup contender. I think you have to put them in cup contender, still even at this point. I think Dallas is a really good roster, great forward core, young forward core too for the most part. Uh, They're not only a team that's good right now, they will be good for the coming future as well. So you can't help but be excited. The blue line does make me ask a lot of questions. We'll see how that blue line can do. We'll see. But I, I think that it can do well. I like... Um, Heiskanen, I like Lindell, I like Harley, just a few other guys I don't really know about. But again, we'll see. Next up, the Utah Hockey Club. Again, I will make a video tomorrow talking about why I'm going to be a fan of Utah this year, which might surprise some people. But I'm going to put them in the direct. Ooh, guys. I'm going to put them right. I'm going to put them right here. Yeah, people are going to be shocked by that. There's actually a lot of people who are really high on Utah this year and think that Utah can get in. But again, I think like the component of being in Utah for the first season, the ads on the blue line, some death pieces that were brought in as well. I think they can get in. I really do believe they can get in. I think that Utah honestly is fun. They're entertaining. They have a good young top six. I think they can get in. And if that central struggles like it did last year, I think they really can, get, or well, they, it didn't really struggle, but if the guy, if the teams below them struggle again, I think they can really break in. And people may not like that, but that's kind of where I stand with, with Utah right now. And then uh, you might call that bias. You can call that bias all you want, but I'm just in love with this team. Like I, I, I love watching this team. Last night was awesome watching it. So I'm very excited for the future and what's to come. And then finally, the Minnesota Wild. Last year, they missed the playoffs. I'm actually going to put them in the hunt. I'm going to put them right here. Mm. Put them right here, though, because I think that I think Minnesota still can be competitive. I think they're still a really good team. If they have a good start, they probably do get in. But again, as as I said, like I have a few other teams that I'm higher on over them, and I just kind of don't really believe that they might not be able to get in. But obviously... We'll see what happens there with that. I think that in terms of overall like young talent, they have a really good roster. I think that it's the last year of the Parise and Sutter deal. So this could be the last year of them kind of being like a little bit and then maybe next season they will consider uh, making some big moves for the long term, which is definitely good for that roster overall. So yeah, that is my beginning of the season tier list. I'm looking to see if there's anything I would change. To be honest, I'd move Seattle up a few spots. I'd put them probably right here. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. I'm um, just trying to see, like, what other ones could I do. Um, I don't want to put Toronto above – I don't want to put Jersey above Toronto because I think that Toronto had probably a more likely chance and the Devils could crash out again. People won't like that, but still. Um – Yeah, I would say this is a perfect list. Let me know your thoughts down below. So yeah, guys, that is going to do it for my official start of the season NHL tier list. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. I'm sorry I've been a little bit inconsistent with uploading content. Yes, I've been making videos every single day. But again, as I said, you know, it's kind of just been like aimless uploading. I really want to grow the community this year and grow my subscriber count and grow all of my people that I don't really know who are subscribed to me. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you guys for watching. Again, we will be doing some more live streams as well with Watch With Nordic. I did two last night with Utah and the Bruins Panthers game. But anyways, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.